Welcome to Ask Beck and Liz, where no topic is off limits. We want to answer your questions about business, life, and everything in between. If you have a question for Elizabeth and I, direct them to ask at beckandliz.com. That's ask at beckandliz.com. So Elizabeth, our question today comes out of our conversation with Laura Spalding of Spalding Deacon and this interesting culture that she created. Um, and so the, the question is, A, how in the world did she create this culture of inclusion and, and diversity and why is it so important? Well, I think that when, what she went through, we, we touched on it in Women in the Know, and she certainly talked about it in her interview. Um, every community she belonged to rejected her, her, her military people, her, I mean, the U.S. government, basically, her family, um, trying to, she tried to rent an apartment and was not allowed to rent an apartment as a same-sex couple. Um, I think when you experience that kind of of exclusion from community and culture, uh, it becomes more important to you to, to make sure that you have that. And so what she did, which is truly amazing, is create her own culture and community that accepted her, allowed her to thrive, be successful and grow, but gave a space to, to anybody. She was welcoming to every single group of people, regardless of color, national origin, sexual orientation, religion, whatever. Um, everybody in those groups, you know, and I think she had to be intentional about it. I think she made sure to be inclusive in who she hired. And I think she set boundaries for those that were not, that they were not welcome there. You either get on board with their culture or you don't, and that's fine, but you just find somewhere else. You're not a good fit. Um, so I think that's how she did it, she, being that intentional and making sure that she's, she's very public about it. She lets people know what her culture is going to be like and what you can expect. And she interviews from that perspective. She attracts franchisees from that perspective. Um, so she makes sure that, that as she grows, so does her vision of, of culture and community. Yeah. So she's sort of the heart of this culture. And I think mm -hmm. the important part about that is the culture of this franchise or or this franchisee or this company, they can all be different. But by being intentional, like Laura was, where she clearly communicated, this is the culture within my organization that I want to create. And these are the types of people that will foster that and allow it to bloom, right? And these, and some people will fit and some people won't. I personally have had that experience um, where I've just not been a cultural fit in a particular uh, company. Wasn't them, wasn't me. It was just, I didn't belong in that particular culture. Uh, Laura said something that I thought was uh, fascinating. It's kind of that uh, put your money where your mouth is kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Where is if you're going to, if you're going to talk about inclusion um, and you're going to talk about diversity as a company, as a culture, then prove it, right? Proof that you are create an environment that allows uh, for that. And I think that's true of any kind of culture. We have to clearly define what our culture is and who's going to be comfortable there and then welcome them with open arms and vice versa. There's times when like me in that one situation, I wasn't a good fit. They shouldn't have let me in. <laughs> <laughs> should have weeded you out right off the bat. I should have said, out of here. <laughs> <laughs> well, it applies to everything. And, and as Laura pointed out, companies perform better with diverse groups of people. Um, and when you become exclusive um, and exclusionary, you are limiting the talent pools and the points of view and the experiences that can make something really beautiful. Um, and I think that's, that's one re when you talk about why, why is it important to have different, I mean, if everybody, I, don't, I wouldn't want to have three friends who are exactly like me. How boring is that, right? <laughs> because every friend that you have teaches you something or brings something to the table that you don't have or has a different experience or a different cultural background that maybe would be useful to whatever business you're trying to do. So I, I think recognizing that, that different people have different gifts um, and that 
positively impacts your business is, is a really right. important thing to keep in mind when you're developing your culture. I think that's so valuable. And from a business perspective, statistics prove what you say is right. That the more diverse we are, different sets of uh, knowledge base and, mm -hmm. and experiences and opinions, when we bring those together and we're receptive together, uh, companies financially do better. So even if you're not comfortable uh, with it yourself, if you're really concerned about your bottom line, you may want to consider thinking a little bit outside the box and thinking a little bit more about diversity and uh, inclusion. You know, like you said, uh, I think when, when we think about our circles, right, uh, our best friend is likely someone very much like ourselves, but then we go out just slightly beyond that, a little bit different, opening us up to other experiences and uh, mm -hmm. adventures that maybe, and then you go out just a little bit more, you're going to have additional experiences and adventures. Uh, so you kind of have to remember what circle you got people in. If this is a business, they need to fit within that culture. But mm -hmm. at the same time, as a business owner, you have to be receptive to opening that circle just a little bit because you're going to be more profitable. Absolutely. Very important thing to think about. Yeah, profit is always important, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's the bottom oh, line. The bottom line. <laughs> <laughs> la, la, la. Absolutely. <laughs> What a great conversation we had uh, with Laura and the takeaways were fabulous. So if you haven't listened to her uh, interview, please go back to uh, where passion and purpose collide and, and take a look at that interview. But for today, mm -hmm. I want to thank everyone for joining us uh, where passion and purpose collide. Profits are made and relationships are forged. This is Beck and Liz signing off and wishing you another purpose filled and profitable week.